Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome back. Hello, hi. I know I have a lot of new subscribers. I want to say hello to all of you. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to subscribe, stop by, watch my videos, and support me. The last day has been insane. I had a video go live yesterday on Wednesday at 3 p.m. It was a collaboration with my really good friend Michael Scott. It brought in so many wonderful and amazing people that were just really supportive. I had a lot of new subscribers, a lot of new comments. I'm feeling extremely overwhelmed in the best way possible. I just want to tell you guys thank you. I appreciate all of the support so much and I know I always tell you guys that but I truly truly mean it. Starting on YouTube was a big thing for me. I was always so terrified and I was like nobody's gonna receive this well. Like who's even gonna watch my videos? Who's gonna like me? Like what kind of people watch videos about a girl that likes spirits and satanic things and things like that. But here you are and I love you guys and I'm so appreciative. So we're here today and I'm just so full of gratitude. I don't even know, I, I, I don't even know like how to put it into words because how I feel right now is amazing. I'm still on cloud nine. I actually reached 100 subscribers, um, I think it was like overnight, it was when I went to bed, I reached 100 subscribers. That's a lot for me. I don't think of it as like people subscribe to me, I know that's what it is, but I think of it as 100 people that want to sit here and listen to me ramble about shit that I find interesting and things that you guys also find interesting. I just think it's so cool. I feel like I have over a hundred friends that want to just sit here and chit chat with me and we can talk about this kind of stuff. So thank you guys so much. I love you guys so much. I'm so, so appreciative of the support. I'm so grateful for all of you. And I really hope that you guys continue on this journey with me. You stick with me. We hang out for a little bit and we're going to get into some crazy investigations the next few months and I hope you guys are super excited for it because I really am. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Lauren. I have always been interested in the paranormal, ghost spirits, um, demonic and satanic things. I can include that in there. I am 25 years old. I have a little boy. He is almost three. You will not see him on this channel at all, but I feel the need to throw that in there just because it gives you guys a little insight about who I am, what I stand for, things like that. I'm a mom, so this is my part-time job as well as another full-time job. I'm a full-time nursing student. All of that so I just want to say hey thank you guys for joining me I'm super excited um, right now I live in Northwest Ohio I have lived here all of my life um, like I said I'm almost 26 years old so it's been a long time I have moved all over Northwest Ohio and I used to live in this city called Tiffin Ohio Tiffin as you guys probably know from my last video if you watched it which you should have was a hotbed of paranormal activity satanic activity um, worshiping, different things like that. Northwest Ohio in itself is a huge hotbed of just all these paranormal things going on and I want to share them all with you guys because I think it's fascinating. Like I said, I used to live in Tiffin, Ohio. I lived there from, um, I want to say April of 2013 until about August of 2014. So when I was 20, 21 years old. This was the period of time where I really got into investigating and learning new things and just um, kind of opening like this whole realm of paranormal things that I had no idea about. I was just really interested. I knew I liked it and I got to know people that were super hardcore into it and I'm so grateful for that. I learned so many things and I got to have so many experiences with these people and I just thought I still think it's absolutely incredible. While I was living in Tiffin, Ohio, I actually got bored of um, a restaurant I was working at. It was like a sports bar type place. I'm actually back at that company now, just at a different location. But for a little bit of time, when I was 20 years old, I got bored with um, working at the sports bar. I wanted something different. I was kind of fed up with the atmosphere. I just wanted a change of pace. I had just started cosmetology school, so I was trying to you know, make these changes in my life. I actually heard of this restaurant called the Pioneer Mill. And this is where our whole story begins. I applied for a job there in September of 2013. I got a job right away and I started right away. It's basically a five star seafood steakhouse. Um, they're a catering company. They are like a five star restaurant in this really old building. 
when I say really old, this building, as far as we knew, was built back in the early 1800s, so it's very old. I was, like I said, I was just getting into like my ghost hunting and my investigating and going out with people and different stuff like that. So I was still kind of learning different haunted locations in Tiffin and just in the area. I had gotten the job here and I remember the first week I started, it was September, September, yeah. Um, I think my first like full week there was the first week of October. So it was right around Halloween season. There were all kinds of spooky things going on in Tiffin. They were doing ghost walks. There were people investigating and there was just all these Halloween festivities going on. So I started working probably 25 to 30 hours a week and I made a lot of great friends. I really loved all the servers I worked with. I got along really well with the owner and his wife and the managers, the head chef, her name is Lori. She's actually one of my really good friends still. Um, we'll get more into her later, but I made really great friends. I really love my job. It was a, a really good change of pace. I didn't realize when I was starting here how haunted it was and it became apparent very quickly. One of my first days training there, I trained with the owner's wife first, and I also trained with a couple of like the older women there that have been there for a few years. They were showing me the ropes. And um, talking about being into the paranormal or basically what you believe, it's still a very, um, how do I say this? It's still a very touchy subject for a lot of people especially older people, especially people um, that, you know, are set in their ways. There are a lot of people that do not believe in the paranormal. It's really hard for them to come out and say what they believe in. It's hard for them to admit that for fear of sounding silly. And I understand that. I get that. Um, our generation was raised a little differently. I feel like we believe in all these different things, which is awesome. But it was really cool that one of my first days there, I had an older lady tell me about how haunted the mill was. She had told me how haunted it was and she actually said there were reports from employees as well as customers that they had seen different spirits in the building. This building is massive. Um, I'm working on finding pictures and gaining access. I wanna do a later investigation, but I do wanna tell you guys, um, Basically, it's a huge brick building. It used to be an old mill. In, I think it was 1812, James Hedges came to Tiffin, Ohio, and he actually brought his brother, Josiah Hedges, who started building this mill right on the river. And Josiah, I believe, started the mill or finished the mill in like 1822. It took a long time to build it just because of, you know, back in the day, you didn't have all the equipment you have now. And um, I believe it said it was established in 1822. This building is 196 years old. That is a really old building. If you guys were to see the inside of it now, you would not believe that. Basically, it's a huge brick building. Um, it's right on the river. It's absolutely beautiful. You walk in to the front door and you have a landing area. You can go downstairs to Tinker's Dam, which is a small pub. There is like a fireplace down there. It's really cozy. They only have it open in the winter. And then right next to that, they have like a smaller catering area, which they have um, like wedding rehearsal dinners and stuff like that. If you're back on the main floor where you walk in, you can go in and stand by the hostess stand. There's a staircase that go goes to the top of the mill, which is a big room that they use for larger wedding parties. There's a bar up there, um, a lot of activity up there. <laughs> and then if you're still down on the main floor, on the right hand side, there is a smaller room called the carriage house i used to have a lot of poker players come in here a lot of older men that would just hang out and drink and you know have snacks and stuff and then on the left hand side they had um i cannot think of the room but it's like the main dining area where they have the salad bar um the kitchens on that side and also on this main floor if you go out back there's a huge deck overlooking the river really beautiful building there's so much history to it so rich also on this main floor i want to mention just for future reference, there is a men and a women's bathroom, and that will come into play later in the story. So like I said, when I started at the mill, I had, I was working with um, probably five or six other women. We were only open from 4 p.m. until 9 p.m. during the week. They weren't heavily staffed. Um, I only worked with a few ladies. It was really great. I really got to know everybody. And everybody, as they became more comfortable with myself, started telling me different experiences that they had at the mill. 
with spirits and different paranormal activity. Off the top of my head, I cannot recall any of their personal experiences. I did message my friend Sammy. She worked at the mill for a couple of years and she's just like this little firecracker of a person. I love her so much. We still stay in touch. I wanted to get a hold of her and see if there were any of her experiences I could put into this video. I know she used to close there a lot. She was always there by herself and I know she had things happen. So if I have any experiences from her that she writes to me, I'm definitely going to post them right here in this video so you guys can flip through them and read them. The one big experience I had, I remember one night I was closing, I closed a lot. Um, I usually didn't get there until about 5 o'clock depending on my schedule with cosmetology school. So coming in at 5 o'clock, I was usually the closer. I usually stayed there. Um, we closed at 9, like I said, and I usually had to tear down salad bar, you know, do all the dishes, help close the kitchen, everything. So I usually didn't get done until about 10 or 10.30 at night. This one specific night, <laughs> um, there was nobody there. It was a slower night. Um, I had just started cleaning up salad bar. I went to use the restroom. I remember standing in the bathroom, and this bathroom is so old. I'm talking like there's a fireplace in the bathroom, I don't think it works. Um, really old chair, floral wallpaper. There were old pictures of people on the wall in the restroom. It's a very eerie feeling. Not necessarily dark, but it's very eerie and it's very, almost like it takes your breath away. It's a, it's a lot to experience, especially for somebody like me. I am very in tune with what I feel and it was, a lot for me especially on this certain night I had not had any other experiences with any spirits in the restaurant nothing like that I hadn't really seen anything or heard anything and I'd gone in I had used the restroom and I remember I was standing by the sink washing my hands um, it was a double sink and standing there washing my hands and I had walked over to start drying my hands off I remember looking down and just kind of like fixing my rings or something I remember looking up, I looked in the mirror in front of me and I could see a man standing next to me. And I can't remember if I saw him in the mirror or if I specifically saw him next to me, but there was a man standing next to me. And I knew it was not an actual man. I knew it was a spirit. It was a very, very clear outline of a spirit. I remember him being taller. Um, he had a top hat on. He was an older man and um, like not, older like in his 60s or 70s but older as in the age of his dress and how he looked and things of that nature. I didn't say anything to him. I, I just stood there for a moment and kind of took it in. I was shocked. I had just gotten into ghost hunting. I didn't really know how to react to something like this so I just stood there. He disappeared. I don't know at what point he disappeared. I don't know if it was me leaving the restroom and I turned around he wasn't there anymore or if I had like looked up and he was gone but he had disappeared and I didn't know what to do. I know some of the other servers there had talked to me about their experiences. I knew what they had seen but none of them were there. There was nobody I could talk to about this but our head chef Lori was still there and I had spoken to Lori that night and I kind of told her what I saw. She actually laid out the details of this man before I even told her what he looked like. That was a lot for me. That was kind of one of those things where I'm like, okay, she's confirming what he looks like. She must know exactly who I'm talking about. Come to find out, his name is Ed. Um, Ed or Edward is what they call him. And he is someone that a lot of people see out at the mill. He is, I guess, a regular customer. He is very polite. He doesn't really cause issues. Um, he was just a nice guy and Lori told me that a lot of people have seen him. So I thought that was really interesting. I was hoping to see him again. He just seemed like this really chill spirit, like nothing crazy. You know, he was really cool. Um, I didn't try to communicate with him because like I said, I had just gotten into ghost hunting. So I'm standing there like, what the fuck is happening? Like, I was like, am I just, is it because I'm not running on like literally no sleep or like, is there really a man next to me? It was him, his name was Edward, and he likes scaring people, I guess. So he is a very common spirit that a lot of people see out at the Pioneer Mill. 
while I was working at the mill, my little sister wanted to get a job and she's three years younger than me. So at this point in time, she was about 17 years old. She actually applied for and received a job as a hostess out of the mill. She is one of those people, I can talk to her about my experiences, but she's not one of those that like goes out of her way and is very open about what she feels. I actually just messaged her and I want to see what kind of experiences she has had out there. I went to dinner tonight at the mill and I looked around. I have some great footage for you guys that I want you to see that kind of shows you what the mill looks like and things of that nature. And um, I told her I was going. She right off the bat had told me, um, you know, just reminded me of like different experiences that multiple people have had out there. She asked me if I was going to do any investigating and things of that nature. So I want to see what she has to say. I don't think we really discussed any experiences she had out there, but she was a hostess. She did work um, different hours than me sometimes, especially on the weekends. So I wonder what she has had happen to her. So we're going to see if I get any feedback from her. I'm going to insert it right here. I want you guys all to read it. Um, I will see. I'm not sure though that she's gonna come back and tell me anything. I'm not sure if she remembers anything. She has a terrible memory. There were different experiences too that I had in this building um, within Tinker's Dam, which was the pub downstairs that I told you guys about. Um, it wasn't a specific spirit or anything of that nature. It was more so seeing shadows and hearing different things, um, glasses clinking when there was nobody in the bar area, um, different things of that sort. Um, I didn't see any specific spirits down there. I only had seen Edward upstairs, um, on the main floor, in the bathroom. I didn't see anyone downstairs. It was that feeling that you knew somebody was there. You couldn't see them, but you could feel them and you just knew, you knew they were there. Whatever they were, they were there and they were spirits. She said, I wish you could have gone to the upstairs and recorded. So I want to ask her why and I want to see what she's talking about. I remember upstairs, like I said, was like the bigger... Um, dining area we did a lot of catering events up there we had a specific bar I remember also um, a lot of things falling off the shelves at the top of the stairs like when you walked out of like the catering area there was kind of like um, a servants area I guess you could say which had a ton of different platters and plates and things of that nature different dishes and a lot of them would make noise or there were different occasions I would walk out and things would just be laying on the floor for no reason. Nobody had gone by, I was the only person working the event and yet I still found things on the floor or still heard things. It was really strange. Okay, so now the mill has had a few professionals actually come in and investigate. I talked to my friend Lori earlier. Um, like I said, she's a head chef out there. She's been out there for a very long time. She is the coolest person you will ever meet. She has the biggest heart. She's such a sweet person. She's also like very rock and roll mom. Like I loved her to death. We had so much fun together. We used to go to catering events together all the time. She was just really cool. I got a hold of her earlier. I know she is working at the Pioneer Mill and she also told me she's working at one of the owner's other restaurants called, um, it was called Paisons before, I think now it's called Closing Time, and that's over in Fremont, Ohio. She actually had a group come in called EVP Mediums, and she said she had talked to a few different groups before she really trusted this one group, and she had a good feeling about them. She brought them in, and they did investigations, and they're actually on YouTube now. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get to them from YouTube. I think I've seen them on there before. Um, they do have a website. I do want to link it down below for you guys, but they had had different spirits come through. The first episode they recorded was on April 23rd of 2016, so almost two and a half years ago. And it says, spirits captured on video. We were shocked to discover several entities our camera picked up behind our investigative team while conducting an EVP session. This historic restaurant in Tiffin is highly active. We communicate with a spirit named Jesse Dalton. I have no idea who that is. Um, he communicates to us across several different platforms like the PSB7, um, a manual scan, etc. In addition, a spirit named Ed makes contact with us several times. This is a long investigation, but if you are serious about the paranormal, this is one episode you don't want to miss. I want to link these down below. Um, they're very interesting. I have seen bits and pieces of them. I have not sat to watch the entire episode, but 
That's crazy. Um, I do remember the parts of the episode that I've seen before never mentioned Ed, and this is the first time that I've searched for their actual professional website and saw that they were in contact with somebody with named Ed. So that's really cool. That's kind of more evidence to show you guys he is a real spirit that is out at this restaurant. And then on June 3rd of that same year, so just over a month later, they went back and did the return to Pioneer Mill, and you guys can find that down below as well. They talked more to Jesse Dalton and Ed, and they got more into his story, or into their stories, and just kind of like let them unfold. I have not watched this, and I'm really interested. I didn't know a whole lot about Edward. I had just seen him in the bathroom that one time, and kind of knew he was a regular spirit around there, and now I'm really interested in actually watching these and seeing what they found. I do know Lori said they're a very credible group. They have been doing this for a long time. They're really nice people. They're like no bullshit type of people. I trust her opinion completely. She is like me. She holds the paranormal very closely to her heart and anything that stands in the way of, you know, just kind of fake people or people that are doing it only for the money to tell you like, oh, such and such things happened and it's not true. She is one of those people that will shut you down so quickly. I can absolutely trust her word on this. So I do want to link them down for down below for you guys to just kind of take a look at and see what they had. They have some videos and I'm actually probably going to watch them tonight. I've just seen bits and pieces, like I said, but I think I want to sit and watch the entire investigation. So back in 1913, there was actually a major flood that went through Tiffin and the whole mill survived. There is a place out by the mill that we call the island, and this is where they have a lot of parties. They have the island party every year. Um, it's basically just a big two-acre mound of like bricks and pavement out um, like downstream in the river that was deposited there after the flood. It's still there, and we call it the island. So that is still there, um, but that did survive the flood. The whole mill actually survived. I think they said there was like minimal damage, which is crazy thinking you know if you guys see this river and see like how much it could flood that's insane that it's still standing and you know went through all of this destruction the mill was actually used to grind um like flour and meal until 1950 and then it was rented out to different people for like a feed store i think at one point it was like a carpentry shop all these different things and then in 1974 um, it was opened as the Pioneer Mill, the restaurant, and I'm not sure who owned it at the time. It was actually placed on the National Register of Historical Places to as like in recognition of its, recognition of its background. So this place went through all of these things like opened in 1822 as a mill and was you know passed off to all these different hands and it went through so many people before 1974 it became a restaurant and was placed on the national register of historical places i think that's really cool they have a plaque out front of the building i want to show you guys that footage as well tonight when i was talking to my friend lori um she told me she was working in fremont at paisons or closing time whatever they call it now and said that she was going to have EVP mediums the group come back in to see what was going on at the mill and see if we could get any kind of update I am more open now about being into the paranormal and my research and different things like that. So I kind of gave her a heads up like, hey, I'm really interested in this. I would love to swing by whenever they come back. She did tell me that when they come back, she's going to get a hold of me and we're going to plan something. We are going to see what goes on at the mill. In the meantime, I want to try to get a hold of the owner and see if he will let me come in and do like even if it's not an overnight investigation, but just a few hours overnight, um, maybe from like a nine until midnight or something of that nature, I would love to come in with some fresh equipment and a fresh pair of eyes and see if there's anything I notice um, just from working there and different vibes I get, see if I can find anything new that maybe somebody else can build off of. I think it's interesting. I've never done a professional investigation there. I would be that fresh set of eyes. I think it's cool that different people feel different things, see and sense different things, and I think it'd be really neat to be able to come in and maybe give my perspective on the whole situation. As someone that used to work there, I feel like I have a lot to share. I know where a lot of the activity is, and I also know as an empath, just kind of 
where I feel certain things. So I might have to get a hold of the owner and see if we can go in and do some investigating. Like I said, I was here tonight for dinner, so I wanna insert a couple of clips just that I took after we were done eating. I walked around the building. I kind of took some pictures, some videos. Um, I'm gonna insert them now. I want you guys to kind of get a feel for this building and I wanna see what you guys think. I think it's really interesting. I think it's a beautiful building. I really want feedback on it and I would love to hear what you guys have to say. see him he's an older man in a top hat and it's easy in here I remember standing right here washing my hands and he was in here <sighs> my God, it's so weird I haven't been back here I have not been back here since I worked here I haven't been back here um, since a couple of weeks after I saw him was born that or born built back in the 1800s. weddings.
right, so right now I am out at the mill. I just got done eating dinner, and I'm just walking around a little bit and kind of checking everything out. I did not know, but I just walked out of the building, and there is a sign that says that this building is registered on the National Register of Historic Places, which is interesting. This building was built, I think they said in the early 1800s, it's really old. Um, it's a big restaurant. They have a lot of weddings and stuff out here, and then out back, there is a patio that we dined on. There's a gazebo out back. It actually sits along the river. So, that's like all back there. But I just walked around inside. Um, this is where I had a lot of activity happen when I was working here, as well as I met Edward, which is a ghost here, a spirit, whatever you want to call him. And I'm not the only one that's seen him. There have been a lot of professional groups that have been out here that have seen him. My really good friend um, Lori is actually the head chef out here and she has seen him multiple times. She also, I'm so proud of her, I feel like she's older than me, she's like she could almost be my mom, probably, I don't know, but she has been doing different um, conventions and stuff and speaking on her experiences out here. This place is a hotbed of activity. Like, it's absolutely insane. This place is beautiful. It's almost 200 years old, so you can imagine everything crazy that happens out here. But it's a beautiful night. So beautiful out here. We picked the perfect night to come dine here. I'm actually going to get in touch with the owner, and I don't know what kind of terms we're on, just because I haven't spoken to him in a few years. I'm going to see if he'll let me come out and do an investigation. And then I'm going to see if I can bring my friend Lori and see what she thinks because she still works here. She's worked here a very long time. And I think the spirits here would be more welcoming to her because she's more familiar than I am. I haven't been here in a while. They know her. I just think it'd be a better idea. So I wanted to go downstairs. Um, downstairs they actually have, it's really dark downstairs, um, like literally really dark. And it has a darker feeling as well so downstairs they you walk down and there's a pool table from what I remember and there is a dining area downstairs with a bar a fireplace they usually open it in the winter it is great for um, like winter time with the big fireplace and they also have a smaller um, like party room area down there so I wanted to go down there. I actually asked our waitress. She doesn't know that I used to work here and I used to help run this place, but she said they're obviously closed. It is, you know, mid-July, so they're not open yet, but I want to go down there. I really want to. I'm going to have to get in touch with the owners or at least the head chef, Lori, and see if there's one night that we could possibly do an overnight. I'm fascinated by this place. I've always been really interested in this place. I think it's incredible. It has such a rich history and it's very eerie there is a very it's not heavy it's not bad but you can tell there are spirits here absolutely you can tell and um obviously i love that <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I know a lot of people probably say it, but I truly, truly, truly appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate all of the support. My dreams feel like they're finally on a roll and things are finally working in my favor. I've been busting my butt to put out content for you guys and I really hope you're enjoying it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Um, you guys can also find my Twitter and Instagram down below. I would love it if you guys join me on there. I'm actually on Twitter a lot. You guys can probably get a response out of me on that platform. Go ahead and follow me. Say hi. I would love it. 
If you are not subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you guys know every time I have a new video come up and I would love it if you guys commented, told me any experiences that you've had here. I know I have a lot of people out of the local area that have been out here, probably a lot of people that have gone to eat there. I would love it if you guys told me any experiences you've had or any opinions you have. And until next time, I love you guys. Please have a good day or night wherever you are and I will talk to you later. Bye.